Welcome back and thank you for tuning in for another drawing video. I want to just say thank you to my new subscribers that have keep coming back and watching and to all of my old subscribers. Thank you for sticking with me. Okay. Uh, on this one, we're going to see that we have a interesting thing here. We have four chamfers on this drawing and the good thing about them is that they're all the same size. Anytime you see something like this and you have a rectangle that's going around, kind of train your mind to think of a polygon. So a polygon or a rectangle, and, and actually I should say a polyline. And you're going to see that when we use the chamfer command, it has a huge feature into that. So when we start drawing this, I'm only going to do this chamfer one time as opposed to doing it four times. This will kind of save you a lot of keystrokes or, or a little bit of time on doing your drawing. Yeah, we know that it probably would take you no more than two to three minutes to do all of those chamfers at the most. But if you got it already incorporated into the into your plans, then you can knock it out with one shot and keep going. So it's kind of one of those things that's going to help you prepare your drawing before you get started. I think everything else is pretty much straightforward. We're going to definitely use some O-snap tracking in order to locate the centers of these circles. And that's going to help us out a lot. And we're going to also use some construction lines because these are in line with each other. So I'm going to use the construction line just so I can make sure that all of that is in line. And when I trim it out, it's going to be perfect. All right, let's jump over to AutoCAD and get started. So the first thing I need to decide is what command I'm going to use. Once again, this refers back to I see those fillets and they're all the exact same size. So in my mind, I think polygon, sorry, polyline. And there are three types of polylines that you're typically going to use. You know, you can use the regular polyline command or you can use the rectangle or a polygon. So I'm just going to use a rectangle since that's a type of polyline. Now I'm going to decide where do I want to pick my first point. Anytime you create a rectangle, and it's very easy to do this if you know the two coordinates that you're going to do. And I'll explain what I mean by this after I go ahead and create this rectangle. So I'm going to decide what my first point could be. I can pick anywhere on the screen I like, and I'm just going to kind of pan up a little bit, but I'm going to set my lower left corner at the zero zero coordinate. So I'm going to type in zero comma zero, enter. And then I'm going to define where am I going to put my upper right boundary at. And we're going to refer back to the drawing after I put this in so I can show you where I got these numbers from. So I'm going to type in 114, comma, 81.5. Enter. And now I'm going to zoom out. And you see that I do have the rectangle that I need. And you can see on the drawing here is that the two numbers that I use was this number and this one. So always remember that the horizontal dimension is going to be our X dimension. So this is the X. And then the Y axis will be our vertical components. Okay, so anytime you're thinking of a rectangle, I defined it and I picked the lower left corner. And right now the chamfers are showing. But if I was to create a line coming down, this is my lower left starting point that I created. And then I have to define the upper right. So anytime you create a rectangle, always remember that you're going to need these two points and that's going to speed it up a lot. So the next thing I'm going to do is define my two big circles that are located on both of the ends. So I'll use a circle center radius. And then I'm going to use the tracking function inside of that. So I'm going to touch this midpoint. And then I'm going to track this way. Always verify that you got the green tracking lines and then type in the distance that you need and in this case it's going to be 13.5 and this is coming directly off the drawing so once i do both of these i'll show you where i'm pulling these from and that's going to help you also with the other two that we have to create so i typed in the 13.5 enter and then i'm going to type in the diameter of this circle which is 12 enter i'll do the exact same thing on the other side so i'm just going to hit the enter button to repeat the last command i did i'm going to touch the midpoint Get the green tracking lines and make sure that it's horizontal. Type in 13.5. Enter. It's the exact same size of my last circle, so I don't have to type that in. All I have to do is hit enter. And then it'll create it. 
All right. Okay, so all I did was use these two numbers here to locate those green tracking ones. Also, that on the slots here, I'm going to use the tens, and that's what I'm going to be tracking down from the midpoint. Now, we know that this is the midpoint. If we do a little bit of math here, we see that 81.5 is the overall height. Well, half of 81.5 should be our 40.75. So that's why we can get away with the midpoint. And likewise, up here on the top, the 114 is the total distance going across. So 57 should be half of it. So that way we can alleviate trying to put in those coordinates. We can just track off of the midpoints and keep right on going. Okay, so for the next two circles, I'm just going to create a circle center radius. Sorry, I didn't click it. Okay, circle center radius. I'm going to touch the midpoint, get the vertical tracking lines, type in the number 10, enter, and then this has a different radius. So I'll type in 10 for this one, and I'll do the exact same thing at the top. So hit the enter button to repeat the last command. Touch the midpoint. Get the vertical tracking, type in 10, enter, and this is the exact same size as my last circle, so I'll just hit enter. All right, so now we have our big circles created. Let's go ahead and create our smaller circles here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and place this first one, and it has a, di a dimension of 13 and 12. All right, so I'm going to go to circle center diameter, and I'm just going to type in the coordinates that I have here which is 13 comma 12 enter and then this circle has a diameter of 10 all right I'll do that again for my next circle so I'm just gonna hit the enter button and once again I don't have to touch my mouth I I know all of the coordinates are on the drawing so no need to touch your mouse again I'll type in the first coordinate which is 13 comma and then I'll give the height of this one which is 69.5 enter exact same size circle so just go ahead and hit the enter button on your keyboard all right i'm going to repeat that command so i'm just going to hit enter i'll give this next one a dimension of 101 comma 12 enter hit the enter button one more time since it's the exact same size circle and i'll do the last circle just by hitting enter it has a dimension of 101 is the x component comma 69.5 enter same size as the last one so i'll just hit enter all right so now that i have all my circles done now i'll show you that nice little trick that's inside of the chamfer command so let's jump to the chamfer command and it's usually highlighted underneath this drop down your fillet is not if fillet is the one that's showing so you can just select the drop down and select chamfer i'm going to select distance and you can see that the distance is located here. I have a 10 by 45. Now, I said this in a previous video. Anytime you see the number 45, that's telling me something that is super important here. A lot of times people will mistakenly think that this distance here is sitting at 10. Actually, it's not. What this is actually telling us is that the dimension is actually telling me from here to here. This is 10 along this side. And this is 10 along the vertical side. All right. So that's very important that you understand the difference between this. This is not saying that it's at 10 at a 45 degree angle. It's telling me that it's 10 from this direction, 10 from this direction. Exact same thing that's going on around all of this. So that's the beauty by telling me that it's 45 degrees. It's really shorthand. Typically, you won't see this if it's any other dimension like a 30 degree or some of that nature. Those are handled a little bit differently. OK, another thing I want to point out here on the drawing while I still have it open, all of those dimensions, you can see that we got just from looking at these. Here's my Y dimensions. So that's why I use these two for my Y dimensions. And I'm referencing when I created all of these circles. And then I use these as my X dimensions. So very straightforward. That's why when I did my first one here, I used 13, 12. And then I went up to here. It's still 13 going across on the x-axis. And then there's a 69. And you can see all the references with the two places. So that refers to this one as well as this one. Okay. So that's some little shorthand that you will see on most of your drawings or any kind of drafting. They may put it that way or they actually might type in the word typical. All right.
So let's go ahead and switch back to AutoCAD and finish this up. Okay, so remember that I'm still in the chamfer command and right now it's asking me for that first distance. I'm just gonna type in 10, enter. And then I'll type in the second dimension, which is gonna be 10, enter. And now once it comes back and I'm looking strictly on my command line, you have the word polyline. Go ahead and select polyline. And then go ahead and select your polyline. And you're gonna see that when you do that, all of your lines or all your chamfers should appear on all of the corners of your polyline. All right, the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is go ahead and create a construction line. And this construction line, I'm gonna use the horizontal. And then I'm gonna select on these two quadrants. So I'll select this quadrant and this quadrant. Hit the escape button. And then we're gonna go back to the construction line command. And then we're gonna type V for vertical, or you can select the word vertical on the command line. And then we're gonna select these two. All right, last thing we have to do is trim and we should be done with this. So let's go to the trim command. And what I'm gonna do is use a fence to go around this really quick. So I'm just gonna type in F, enter. And what that allows me to do is I'm gonna left click here and I'll go straight across here. And once I get to the end here, I'll left click and come up. Left click, come this way. Left click, come down, enter. And then I'll keep trimming off these parts on the inside. So I'm just trimming off the inside parts of my circle as well as the line underneath. So circle, line underneath. I'll get rid of my circle, the line underneath. And over here on this side, the circle and the line underneath. Last thing I need to do is just finish this out on the inside. So I'm just gonna trim these back. And you can see once you set this up, this kind of can be a really simple drawing for you. Then escape. Now I know my UCS kind of is sitting here in the corner, but making it look like a rectangle. But if I move this over, you'll see that that is actually not there. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something about doing chamfer today or quick and easy way if you have a common chamfer. And if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe, like, and leave me a comment if it's something that you didn't understand, or if you got a better way of doing this, please leave me a comment. I always like to hear new ideas and, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, but I'm still learning just like you are. All right. So thank you for watching.